Well, hello again. Good to be together and to open God's Word together today. Um, Isaiah 53. Um, so much, uh, and we're only touching on little bits and pieces of it, but so much of Isaiah, his prophecies are directed toward the, their Messiah, messianic, their uh, um, prophecies regarding the coming Messiah, the Jesus uh, to come. And we're, you know, they, <laughs> in the Old Testament, it's important to note, they had faith. They were believing God would provide a Messiah, a Savior, out in the future. And we are looking back by faith, believing God did provide the Messiah. And so it's all based on the finished work of the cross. And here we read some really insightful things here in the fourth verse of the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Surely he, speaking of Jesus, has borne our griefs or our sicknesses or carried um, the weight of um, or taken up and carried away. That's what this, this idea of born our griefs, he's, he's picked that up and carried that, that sickness of sin and carried our sorrows, the pain that was associated with that. Yet we esteem him stricken or beat down. We, we, they, they thought he was beat down by God or smitten by God, struck down and afflicted. Um, uh, and so then he goes, but he was wounded or pierced, it says, for our transgressions. Pierced through uh, or, or nailed, isn't that something? For our transgressions, our rebellions. And then it says, he was bruised for our iniquities or crushed. Um, and it, it, it's, you know, this, our, our iniquities, it, it means specifically in this is, is our twisted, perverted, wicked ways. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty, pretty wild. Our, our crookedness, um, the chastisement or the punishment for our, uh, for our peace was upon him. In other words, him receiving that punishment brought peace for us, it provided peace for us. Um, and then it says, and by his, and then by his stripes, we are healed. Um, and, and true, um, that what he received, uh, provided healing for us both eternally and otherwise that those whippings that he received, those stripes, those beatings, those whippings that he received. Um, and certainly, uh, he has healed us from that, that grip uh, of sin, the death, death grip that, that, that uh, sin had on us. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone, uh, turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And when it says of us all, it's talking about all of humanity. You know, so when we, you know, there's always these funny debates of, you know, who, well, who really, was it the Romans that crucified him, Jesus, or was it the Jewish people that had him crucified? You know what? Every one of us had a part in it. Sin crucified Jesus. He came to die, the, the just for the unjust. But this is the thing. He did this because he loves you, because he loves me, because he wants us to have life, everlasting life. He doesn't want us to be separate or distant or apart from him. He wants us to have relationship with him. And that's just a simple prayer away. Asking Jesus, inviting Jesus into your heart, saying, Jesus, I want you to take up residence in my life. I want to ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I, I need a savior. And I want to ask that you'd be my personal Lord and savior. And he will come in and make his home in your heart and your life, and he will bring you the newness of life. He will forgive you of your sins. It is just a simple prayer way. Don't hesitate. If you haven't prayed that, pray that simple prayer of faith. And you know what? Maybe for some of you, you're going to bump into someone today who needs you to share with them that simple word of truth, that they can pray that simple prayer of faith so you know exactly how it goes. Invite Jesus into your heart and let him take up residence and be your Lord and Savior. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.